Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against the nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather on this the fifth Sunday of Lent, and we give thanks to God that we can do so by means of um, our online video, by means of the technology available to us, but still more by means of that spiritual communion that we so endeavor to enter into, to recognize that God calls us to himself. And although he bestows upon us many blessings in the flesh, many blessings that uh, we can materially and physically make use of, he gives us indeed many blessings in the spirit, that of peace, that of hope, that of love. And so may we enter into this Holy Mass, united in that very love of the Holy Spirit. May we be united with family and friends who join us, whether here in our parking lot, just outside the church, whether from their homes and their living rooms, or from across the country. All of us, family and friends, coming together to give thanks to Almighty God for His blessings and the very call to life that He bestows upon us. And so, dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, so we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, May we, may we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revealed. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. 
But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus, from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mark, Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were try just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them, said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, 
Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, we gather on this fifth Sunday of Lent, speeding, indeed, speeding towards the festivity, the celebration of the mystery of Easter, the very summit of our faith in our Lord, the very summit of why we believe, because we believe in a God of life. We believe in a God who raises us up from the dead. And so our Easter celebrations, although they have been so much contorted by the current situation which we are facing in the world today, in the coronavirus pandemic, that we can still live in that faith, live in that very mystery of new life in Christ. Here we are on the fifth Sunday of Lent, just a few short weeks away from new life celebrated at Easter. We have followed Christ in these weeks, depriving ourselves of material goods, and even those physical goods have been deprived for us as the world throughout this Lent has suffered, has entered into that very depravity of our own material power, economies are struggling, nations are shut down, and darkness seems to envelop the world, the dryness and darkness of Lent itself, on a global scale, for all faithful and unfaithful, believers and non-believers alike. But we, as faithful Christians, formed as brothers and sisters in Christ, sons and daughters of God, redeemed in the waters of baptism and the waters that flow from the side of Christ on the cross, are, are seeing this, our reality, for the reality as it is, a call to conversion, a, con a call to trust. Trust in the Lord God. Trust in the God, not merely of this world, but of the heavens itself, who calls us not to life merely in the body, who calls us to life in the spirit. As we've been reading the Gospels of the past few weeks, we've seen how the Lord Jesus healed the man born blind. He couldn't see the world for what it was. His heart was very much full of the love of his parents. His heart and soul were very much attuned to the words of God. But he couldn't see the world around him, this material flesh that you and I so easily can see. And the Lord healed him of that blindness. But it wasn't a blindness so much of the world, but a coming to believe in the Lord God who is in our midst. Yes, Lord, who is he that I may believe in him? The blind man, restored to sight, exclaimed. To believe in the Lord. And then last week, 
the Lord was making his way from Galilee in the north to Jerusalem. And instead of taking the long way that faithful Jews would because they would avoid the country of Samaria, the peoples that are the Samaritans, he went straight through the heart of it, through that unknown country, through that place of, as it were, infidels, those who were set apart because of cultural or national division. And he went, went right through the heart of it, and there taking a break at a well in the noontime hour of the day, he encountered a woman coming to draw water, coming at the time, hottest part of the day, when no one else would be around. She was coming because of shame. Embarrassment at her situation. Shame because she didn't want to see others, or rather didn't want others to see her. She didn't have a stable family life. We don't even know if she had children of her own, but she had multiple husbands. And she was embarrassed to be with others. She felt like a stranger, an alien. And yet there Christ met her and called her to believe in him. First by responding to her desire for water to parch, or rather, to satiate her thirst. And the Lord said, Ah, if you knew who was speaking with you, you would ask for living water, the water that He gives. And she responded, Lord, give me this water, that I may not have to come back to this well. You remember that conversation? But she was already starting to see, that is, to believe, to believe that the Lord God comes to satisfy our thirst, fulfill our needs. But we sometimes don't know what they really are. All we think is that I need water from the well to pass these dry lips. Or I need food at the grocery store and stock up my shelves for fear of bodily hunger. But the Lord is leading us ever deeper to recognize, to see clearly that it is not for the life of this body or for the life of this world that we are made, but for the very life that is union with God, to know God as He is, not as merely a caricature or an imagination of our hope and our belief but as a God who comes to meet his people, who loves them and has called them into life for his glory and our glory in him. And now we come to this fifth Sunday of Lent, this beautiful gospel where Jesus shows how much he is in love with you and me, how much he desires our life and our love. And I pray that you can read this gospel again. Now that we've got the means of our videos, you can hear this again. Please do. Because we hear how Jesus has that great love for his friends, as you and I have love for our family and friends. He enters into our families. He enters into our communities. And the one whom he loved was ill, Lazarus. And the Lord stayed in that place where he was for another two days after hearing that he was ill. Because he wanted to prove a point. The Lord says, this illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And the disciples, as, as he reveals to them that Lazarus is asleep, that is dead to the world, 
They don't understand yet how the Lord is speaking about that death, not of the flesh, but speaking about that death that so easily corrupts many of the world today. The loss of hope. The loss of belief in God. A God who is the God of the living. A God who is the God who calls us out of death into life. And you and I are constantly dying every day. Because we're trying to keep these bodies as if we're living according to the stuff of the earth. According to the stuff that passes away and is transitory. But sometimes we forget the life of the soul. The life of who we are as images of God. Not images of the flesh, but images of that very spirit dwelling within us. And so even the disciples struggle to believe. But the Lord God wants to strike at that very doubt of ours. To lead us to understand the very life to which we are called. A life of God. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now we know that the custom is that for three days, are the ritual rites of funerals typically, typically taking place. In some customs it is believed that even the soul remains in the ambit of the body after death for three days, earthly days as it were. But here Christ comes on the fourth day, after it is known that Lazarus is really dead, dead that is to the world, that the soul and the body are separated. Surely there's a stench, Martha exclaims. But what Christ Jesus is revealing to us is that He is the resurrection and the life. He is the very Son of God in whom you and I are called sons and daughters of God. And in Christ Jesus, we can find our life not life merely for the world and the stench of this existence, but for the life of the soul and the very heavenly reality to which you and I are called. Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And Martha's thinking is sometimes you and I so easily think. I believe in the resurrection, but that's got to be somewhere at the end of time. That's got to be somewhere distant from me. I believe it, but it's, it doesn't affect me right now. But Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And now we can believe this all the more. Lent 2020, when our vision can sight and see clearly the reality for which we have been born. Clearly the life for which you and I have been made. And so let us pray for those who are sick, and those who are suffering. But let us pray also for those who are healthy, and those who perhaps are still afraid that they may get sick, so that we may see clearly the life that God is calling us to, a life in union with Him, a life in Jesus Christ that you and I can already share and appreciate now. We still see according to the vagaries of this flesh, according to the murkiness of this life. We don't see clearly yet. But that is the nature of our condition. We still have tears that muddy our eyes. And Jesus wept because he shares with us our human nature. He shares with us our weakness. He shares with us our death. And he wept at the grave of Lazarus for his friend, as you and I weep for our beloved who passed away. But then he commanded that that stone be rolled away. Lazarus, come out. Because Jesus is constantly reminding us and sharing with us the promise of our hope. 
We live in time. We suffer the challenges of the nights and the days. But we are called to live in the light of that eternal day, to live in the light of faith in Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. And so let us live always in that faith. And let us live united to Christ now. Because in the flesh we are already dead. Just trying to sustain it every day with the bread and the water that we can raise up from the earth. But in the spirit, that's where we're alive. Let that spirit come to full stature. Let that soul of yours be un unburdened by sin, cleansed of our weaknesses and faults. Let us thrust ourselves upon the mercy of God and say, Lord, I want the stuff of the earth too much. I want to live according to this life more than I want to live according to yours. Let us cleanse our souls through this exercise of great spiritual penitence and new life that is being wrought for us in our world today. And as we do, we'll be able to recognize Christ all the more with eyes made clear, with hearts filled with the very living waters of His grace, and with a life that is beyond the grave, because we'll be able to say Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Dear friends, let us pray together now. Let us all profess that faith that the world has known for these many hundreds of years since Christ and now is revealed to us as we come to share in that very mystery of our redemption in Christ. And so we can proudly profess and invite so many others into this faith of ours as we say, I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, during this Lenten season, as we make our way ever nearer to the mysteries and the joy of Easter and the new res resurrection in Christ our Lord, we offer these our prayers and petitions. We pray firstly for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Bishop Mitchell Rosensky, our ordinary here in the Diocese of Springfield, all bishops everywhere, that they who are successors of the apostles, who followed Christ in the flesh, May he too now lead us and shepherd us faithfully according to his will and his words, that they may be protected as they protect us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our government leaders, 
for President Trump, for Governor Baker, for the governors all over the country, that they may lead their communities and this, our nation, always to respect and safety, security, but even more so to an expression of that life that is of the soul and a freedom of religion and the practice thereof. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our beloved sick, those who have been infected by the coronavirus disease, those who have been struggling and suffering, that they may know the very consolation of the Divine Physician, and that they too may be raised up from the beds of their pain to the very joy of celebrating and ministering and, and, and entering into the mystery of life in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our health care workers, for doctors and nurses, those we know from our own parishes and our families, those who are working so hard to care for us and to give us hope, that they may not lose hope to themselves, but may know our prayers in our deep love and thanks for them, that they may be protected in their love and work for us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for those who are afraid, that we may ever know whether sick or healthy, whether or whether young or old, whether rich or poor, that we can always give glory to God in whatever state we find ourselves, and to turn our hearts always towards Him, and to allow His heart to infuse ours with great love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for our beloved dead. We pray for those who struggle and fear death. We pray for those who have already died, that they may know the full splendor of eternal union with God and may be stripped away of anything that may have impeded that perfect relationship with Him. Let us pray for the souls in purgatory, those that have died, and those from our own families and our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers. For we raise them through your beloved Son, who is our Lord, who is the resurrection and the life, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb. 
Just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist, St. Bernadette, St. Padre Pio, St. John Paul II, St. Faustina, and all of our saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We would be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our bishop, and the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever.